while we were driving past a checkpoint. There was just a big puff of smoke that came up and uh, we really didn't even know that we were getting ambushed or attacked or anything. When I drove the truck out of the smoke area, I turned the truck to the left and uh, realized that we were actually being attacked and I wasn't able to stop the truck and didn't know why, so I looked down and noticed that my right leg was completely gone and that part of my left leg was uh, severely injured. It was, it was really confusing at first. They said a whole bunch of words I didn't understand, you know, like a street he was on and that he was hit by an EFP. And it had to be three hours later, they called me back and they told me, you know, he had lost his legs. And I, I was relieved just knowing he was alive. I got to Walter Reed uh, March 7th. I think I went through a total of almost 27 surgeries. I went to every single appointment he did. I mean, we bared through it together. You know, if he was having a bad day, you know, I tried to make him feel better. If I was having a bad day, he would try to make me feel better. She was always there trying to push me to do something, um, whether it was just walk another lap, wake up, get out of bed, I mean, do something. It was, it was always something she was doing. Basically, um, we stay at her mother's house where we actually had a lift installed um, to actually get me into the house. I can pretty much get around the house. I can't get into the bathroom, so I have to transfer into a whole nother chair to get into the bathroom. And then I can't get in the front bedroom, so we stay downstairs where I have another chair down there where I just get out of my chair, hop down the stairs, transfer into a different chair, and then roll into the bedroom that we actually had to get um, fixed so that the door was actually wide enough for me to go through it. And then we also had to get a whole nother bathroom installed downstairs just because it's too much of a hassle to go up and down the stairs. It's hard. I don't like to see him have to, you know, scoot down the stairs and have to scoot back up, especially when he's not feeling well or he's tired. Being independent is a huge thing. It's not really the factor of them wanting to help. It's more or less that I don't like people helping all the time. I believe with, with the new house and all the uh, adaptive equipment, it would limit that. The design of the house is actually great. Um, I can get into every room. If you know I, I want to cook something, I'll be able to cook something. The bigger hallways would actually be a, a lot more helpful considering where we're at now. I have to basically go all the way to the other side of the house to even turn around to get to the where I need to go to if the door is shut and I'm carrying something, especially with the front doors and um, garage doors and stuff like that. Um, it would just be a lot easier. The roll-in shower is actually a great feature. It's going to make him much more independent. It will, you know, boost up his self-esteem. He'll be able to do everything he wants in his house. Um, and it would just be an, an excellent feeling to know that it's, it's our personal space and it, it's there for us. It is actually overwhelming to know that there is an organization that does homes like this just for the wounded veterans and actually gives back to the soldiers themselves. It, it's an excellent feeling to know that there are so many people out there that are willing to help.